Hi, welcome to Easy Exposure, the tutorials about photography. First of all, I would like to wish all of you Happy New Year. And I would like to start this year with a new lesson. I get a lot of questions from you guys about different type of lenses, about all those numbers and letters you see on the lens or in the lens name. So in today's lesson, I decided to solve the mystery. So we will be talking about the lenses, different type of lenses and all those weird numbers and letters you see on the lens in, in the lens name. And I will be talking about two main brands which are Nikon and Canon. And I can wait to get started. All, let's talk about focal length of the lens. Focal length is measured in millimeters, so on every lens you will see the focal length in millimeters. And there are two types of the lenses. Some lenses are zoom lenses and some of them are prime lenses. So what is the difference? For example, the lens on the left is zoom lens. As you can see, it says 18 to 200 millimeters. It means that you can change its focal length. You can change it from 18 millimeters to 200 millimeters. Unlike the lens on the right, which is prime lens, lens with fixed focal length, it says 50 millimeters, so it means you can't change its focal length. It just stays 50 all the time. Prime lenses have only one ring on the lens which you can turn, which is focusing ring. Unlike zoom lenses, which have two rings, one of which is focusing ring, another one is a zoom ring. With zoom ring, you can change the focal length of the lens. Depending on focal length of the lens, we can divide all the lenses into different types. For example, lenses with less than 21 mm of focal length considered to be extreme wide-angle lenses. These lenses very often used in architecture, especially indoors, uh, because when you want to get as much room as possible in your shot, you don't really have a lot of space to step back. This when the wide angle comes very handy. Among extreme wide angle lenses, there is a special type of the lenses which called fish eye. Fish eye lenses are known for the distortion they create in the image. Like in this photo, for example, normally horizon would be straight, but in this photo it's kind of rounded because of the fish eye lens distortion effect. 21 to 35 mm lenses are considered wide angle lenses and are very often used in landscapes. They say that it's a good idea to stay away from wide lenses, for example, for portraits because any wide-angle lens can uh, create some distortion depending how you shoot the subject. The closer to the subject you come with this lens, the more distortion you get. Let's say you're taking somebody's portrait and if you have the person's nose close to the lens, it will appear bigger than normal. Though there are some photographers who use wide-angle lenses in portraiture very successful, it helps them to define the specific style of shooting. 35 mm to 70 mm lenses are considered normal lenses and they are often used, for example, for street photography. 70 to 35 mm lenses are medium telephoto lenses and very often they are used for portraiture. The reason for this is because, for example, wide-angle lens and even some normal lenses can still give you some distortion, which is not always flattering in portraits. But telephoto lenses, on the other hand, are very long and you have to be very far from, from your model to take a picture, which makes it more difficult to direct your model. Plus, you don't always have enough space to step back with those lenses. This is why a lot of portrait photographers choose medium telephoto lenses to take portrait pictures. And finally, regular telephoto lenses, which are 135 millimeters and above, which can go to 
300 and more millimeters and those lenses are often used for sports and wildlife because in this kind of photography your subject very often is very very far from you and you have you have to have a good reach to take a picture but keep in mind that some zoom lenses can be wide angle and telephoto lens at the same time it depends which uh, range of focal lengths it has this is just a general overview for you guys about focal lengths and I will be making more videos about this subject because it's very broad and we will be testing different focal lengths in a different type of photography. Another very important feature of the lens is the maximum aperture of the lens. Hopefully all of you know that the aperture is an opening inside the lens and the wider you can open this opening in the lens, it varies from lens to lens, the faster the lens considered. Why faster? Because with a wider aperture you can let more light into the camera, it means we can shoot with faster shutter speed to balance it out. Actually, there is two types of apertures in the lens. It's a variable and fixed apertures. All prime lenses, where the focal length doesn't change, have fixed maximum aperture. With zoom lenses, it's a different story. Some of them have a variable aperture and some of them have fixed aperture. Like, for example, lens on the left, 18 to 200 millimeter lens, has a variable aperture. As you can see, it's from 3.5 to 5.6. What does it mean? It means that if you have your lens at 18 millimeters, your aperture will be 3.5. But if you zoom in to 200 millimeters, your aperture will change and it will be 5.6. Your maximum aperture will be 5.6. On the other hand, lens on the right, which is 24 to 70 millimeter lens, has a fixed maximum aperture of f2.8. Very often those lenses are more expensive and unfortunately they have a smaller focal length range than the lenses with variable aperture. As I already mentioned, the lenses with fixed wider aperture are considered fast lenses and uh, have advantage while shooting in darker conditions because you can use faster shutter speeds. The lens on the right is one of my favorite lenses by the way. Also, on some Nikon lenses you might see a letter abbreviation VR, which stands for vibration reduction. And on some Canon lenses you might see IS or image stabilization. So what does those mean? It means that your lens has an image stabilization technology which can minimize blur caused by camera shape. And you can get camera shake while holding the camera and using slower shutter speeds. I hope you all remember the rule from my shutter speed lesson where I told you that it's not recommended to hand hold the camera and shoot with shutter speed which is slower than one over focal length of the lens because it can cause camera shake or blur in the image. And this is when vibration reduction or image st stabilization might come handy because it will let you to shoot with a slower shutter speed than you normally would. It actually can uh, let you shoot with a shutter speed 3-4 stops slower than you normally would. Also, the raw lenses, which are meant for crop sensor camera or full frame cameras. And if you would like to learn in more details about those, please watch my lesson 21. For Nikon, crop sensor is assigned as DX and full frame is assigned as FX. DX or crop sensor lenses are usually marked uh, on the lens body as DX. So, the main difference between those two types of lenses is its size. And full frame or FX lenses can be used on any Nikon body, either it's crop sensor or full frame. 
because they can cover both of them. And even uh, using FX lenses on crop sensor body has its advantage because then you're using a sweet spot of the lens, the middle of the lens. On the other hand, DX or crop sensor lenses are meant for cropped sensor body because they're actually smaller in diameter. You can still put them on the full frame camera and still take a picture. The only problem will be is that you will get a black edges around it, kind of like vignetting because the lens is not able to cover the whole sensor. Here is the list of DX and FX Nikon cameras. Canon also has two type of lenses, one of which are for crop sensor and others are for full frame. It just uses a different abbreviation. EFS are crop sensor lenses and EF are full frame lenses. Unlike Nikon lenses, it's not recommended to put crop sensor Canon lens on a full frame body because the build of the lens itself is a little bit different where it connects to the camera. And here is the list of crop sensor cameras and full frame sensor cameras for Canon. I think the main reason why Nikon and Canon created crop sensor lenses which don't fit all the cameras is to have cheaper and lighter versions of the lens. Because uh, full frame lenses are heavier and are more expensive usually. Nikon also has G and D type of lenses. The main difference between those is that D lenses have an aperture ring with which you can physically control the aperture on the lens rather than with thumb wheel on the camera. Also D lenses can be used on older cameras as well all the way back to the first Nikon camera from 1959. On the other hand, G lenses don't have an aperture ring on the camera and they cannot be used on older cameras which require an aperture ring, unless you want to be stuck using the minimum aperture all the time. On the image you can see two 50mm lenses, one of them is D and one of them is G lens, and one with aperture ring and the other one is without. But this is actually not the only difference between those two lenses. As you can see, lens on the left is AF lens and lens on the right is AFS lens. AF lenses actually use a screwdriver focus mechanism. In this case, focusing has to be controlled by the camera motor. Unlike AF-S lenses, which have focus motor built into the lens, they are usually much quieter and faster in focusing. Also, bodies what are AF-S only will not autofocus with regular AF lenses. And here is the list of the cameras which will not autofocus with AF lenses and the list of the camera which will. You can still put that lens on the camera, but you just will have to focus manually. And now let's talk about Canon focusing systems. For example, some of the Canon lenses might have USM, which stands for ultrasonic motor, which allows faster and quieter focusing. Other lenses might have STM, which stands for stepping motor, and it's applied to a new range of lenses and in the, is designed that way that it helps to eliminate noises during video recording. So it focuses so quiet that uh, audio will not pick up the focusing noise. And now let's go back to Nikon lenses. There are a few more features I would like to talk about. There are some Nikon lenses which are featuring ED or extra low dispersion glass, which actually is supposed to correct chromatic aberration or optical color defects. Let me show you what chromatic aberration is. I opened Lightroom and I found this image and at the moment you can't really see anything. 
but if I enlarge the image, you will be able to see those purple and green colored effects, which are usually occurring on the borderline between dark and light part of the image. Not always, but sometimes you can get it and it depends on your lens, of course. But it's not a big deal because you can actually correct it in post pretty easily and you can correct it in Lightroom just by going to develop module to lens correction color and just click on remove chromatic aberration sometimes you need to play with the sliders but let's just try to click remove chromatic aberration and voila it's gone looks much better right so let me click we have chromatic aberration and then click again and it's gone. It was pretty easy. And another feature is Nano Crystal Coat, which is a sign on the lens with a letter N. It helps to eliminate or minimize ghosts and flare. And this is how flare looks, if you don't know. You can get flares in your photo when you shoot directly into the sun, and then you will get those colorful circles in your picture, and sometimes it can also influence your sharpness and contrast. But as you can see, it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes photos with flares can look very cool. Canon also has a special line of the lenses. Those are L lenses, and you can recognize them by a red ring around the lens. They also might have a wide body. As Canon claims, this prevents the overheating of the lens. This is actually a professional line of Canon lenses. And some sources say that L stands for luxury, because those lenses are expensive. Other sources say that L stands for low dispersion. Remember, I was talking about Nikon ED uh, which means low dispersion glass, which is supposed to minimize chromatic aberration. Also, L lenses are heavier and stronger build. A lot of them are weather sealed. They also will work on all film and digital Canon cameras on all formats. They also typically have wider fixed aperture and USM, which is ultrasonic motor, about which we were talking earlier. And also they tend to produce better colors. This is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and learned something new. This was just a general overview of all lenses. And if you decided to buy some lens, I would recommend also to check the individual reviews on the specific lens. And I will be making more reviews and more tutorials about the lenses, about the use in a different type of photography. We will be testing some lenses in different situations. So stay tuned and please check out my website which is easy-exposure.com where you will find the lessons uh, in a written form as well as quizzes and also photography. Form.